Another intro. <laughs> another intro. Hey, folks, man, this is what and we are back with another episode of From the Canopy Film Show, and this is our review episode. I'm joined as always with Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. And we got Evil Courtney. What's up? <laughs> I've been saying what's up lately a lot. You know, I feel like we did this before. Oh, deja, yeah. vu deja vu all over again. <laughs> Uh huh. So we're just gonna talk about some of the films we've seen recently. Uh, we got a pretty uh, nice uh, stack of films this week, uh, and I guess I'm gonna start with one uh, me and Cornelius saw, and it's gonna be called "Where the Crawdads Sing." And this is based off a novel. It's an adaptation from a pretty a best-selling novel, and the story uh, revolves around a girl named Kaya. So, abandoned as a girl, Kaya raised herself in the dangerous marshlands of North Carolina for years. Rumors of the Mars girl haunted Barkley Cove, isolating the sharp and resilient Kaya from her community. Drawn to two young men from town, she opens herself to a new and startling world. However, when one of them is found dead, Kaya immediately becomes the main suspect. As the case unfolds, the verdict as to what happened becomes increasingly unclear, threatening to reveal many secrets. And this thing is directed by Olivia Newman, it stars Daisy Edgar Jones, Taylor John Smith, Harris Dickinson, Michael Hyatt, Sterling Macer Jr., and David Stathern. And um, this uh, was pretty good, man. I rather enjoyed this film, man. Um, had a really strong cast. Um, like for me, I don't think it broke any new ground as far as the the mystery that was involved in this. But I thought it was a very entertaining film from start to finish, especially seeing the main character daisy and her youth you know um abusive dad you know we see the family separate early and um definitely just left on alone alone to raise mm -hmm. herself you know and she does you know pretty much gets herself you know to adulthood before she gets involved you know with these two men but but it's really got some really strong performances man i really enjoyed um uh, um michael hyatt's um Role, you know, they they were they were these um two black uh, store owners in the town who kind of took a liking to her. You know, they were kind of real friendly to her when she was youth, and they realized that she was on her own. So they went up above and beyond to kind of help her out. You know, buying stuff from her and just you know checking in on her, making sure she's okay out there. So that was a really cool relationship to see that develop. And um, but um, everything else unfolded pretty well, man. It's solid, man. Like even you know the mystery and the acting of Garrett Dillahunt. Uh, did a real good job playing her dad, um, the scumbag dad, you know, like just, yeah, no. but you'll recognize him from the Walking Dead show. But um, I had a good time seeing it, man. I saw it on the Humble. It was one of the weeks where nothing else new was out. Shout out to uh, Chris Lambert, the uh, Monday yeah, Festival. For, I saw that he posted that he was going to see it, and I asked him, like, How was it? And, you know, he said, It was okay, man. I was entertained. You know, um, he's like, You know, I wouldn't go out of my way to the theater to see it. And I was like, Well, I already got a uh, Regal Pass, so. It ain't gonna cost me nothing but some time. And he's like, Yeah, I got the AMC ticket to it. So I went and saw it and, and I enjoyed myself, dude. It was, you know, pretty um compelling story, man. You know, with a really um interesting um twists and turns. Um, and like I said, man, part of the charm is this though is like the first half of this too, seeing the younger actor that's playing her. Um, I think Jojo Regina playing her younger self and watching her get self-sufficient and come up to adulthood, and then the second half of the movie plays out. But I enjoyed it, man. What exactly is a crawdad? Um, it's a crayfish. Crayfish. This is okay. a nickname for a crayfish. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I forgot the other name. The tiny baby like, little lobster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little gross. Okay. Like, uh, water, okay. Okay. Water bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basically, nice. people eat. Okay. Yeah. So, so what'd you think of it, uh, Cornelius? I really like the film. Um, I don't. Everybody in this film, I think Garrett Dilla might be the biggest yeah. star, and I think yeah. he. I, I think he um, did a good job in it. Um, it was a good court. It was a good court case slash mystery film because you, you know, you're doing a couple flashbacks and then you're going back to the courthouse and just seeing what was going on. Um, overall, I like this film a lot. A lot of people told me how good the book is, and 
Um, my friend Stephanie Wiley said she was pretty much giving that um, the, the novel to people for Christmas um, years back, uh, whenever it came out. But um, after everybody was telling me how how much they liked the book, I you know was real to treat to see the movie. Um, yeah, but I, I I really enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting much, but it did. You know, it it was a real done film and a good story. Mm. Good stuff. I'm gonna have to check that out, man. I remember seeing the trailer a while back, but I just didn't get around to seeing this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only in theaters right now, so it, it'll probably be home sooner or later. It probably yeah, did pretty good for what it was. I don't yeah. think I'm spending a lot of movie to make it. It's mostly drama and you know. Yeah, like, Aris Willispoon um, produced it, and you know. Oh, her? Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's been a while since I heard that name. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, I guess. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and, uh, and step up. I'm, I'm the only, the other two movies we're going to talk about, all three of us seen. So, you know what I'm saying? I'll just talk about this okay. other one that I saw. It was a, it was a uh, Netflix. I saw it on the, the top 10. It was, I want to say yesterday, it was hitting at number five. Mm -hmm. um, it's an IFC film called The Wretched. And pretty much um, it's uh, it follows a defiant teenage boy struggling with his parents' imminent divorce. And he faces off with a thousand-year-old witch that has possessed his neighbor next door. So, um, to me, instantly when I read when I read that synopsis, I was pulled in because that sounds a little bit kind of like Fright Night, mm. you know. Um, yeah. Minus, you know, vampires, mm -hmm. witches, you know. Um, it, uh, it it it's definitely you know the fact is it's a it's a teenage young man, a teenage boy, and uh, everything like that. But that's the only similarity. I, I, I cannot compare the two films outside of the fact that it's just, you know, his neighbor going on and it's a, it's a teenage boy. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. You know what I'm saying? It's about three years old. I want to say it came out in 2019. But, um, dude, it starts strong. Instantly, I was pulled in. I mean, they, they set the tone right out the gate, um, giving you some good horror elements, you know what I'm saying, without being excessive. Or setting the bar too high to that could ultimately lead to the film falling short in the in the back end. Um, and surprisingly enough, it was really like the acting was really good for considering that there's like no household names in this. I mean, the cast is you get Hyper Curta, John Paul Howard, Zara Maher, Madeline Stunkel, Kevin Bigley. I mean, I haven't really seen any of these individuals in any other films not to say that they haven't been i just ain't cross paths with them but um you know uh it was acted very well and the story building was cool the way that like it just they, they just keep spoon feeding you these little tense moments and and these this, this lore of this witch and these different things that um she's capable of doing and uh you know these these powers and, and things of, of that nature that kind of came off uh really original to me you know what i'm saying like I, i've seen a lot of films uh, surrounding witches and and witchcraft and things like that and there were certain things that this particular witch was bringing to the table that i didn't see done in other films which i thought that that was very very um cool it was uh pleasing it was aesthetically pleasing the setting was good they, they, it takes place in this like little like pocket town where like doesn't seem like much happens so why not you know let these folks get haunted by a witch thought that was that was really cool and um the movie it plays fast too it's clocking in at like it's, it's about a, about an hour 35 minutes it feels like you're watching an hour-long episode you know what i'm saying so i really appreciated that as well and um like i said when it comes to the four elements the creature design is very cool um the, the special effects the gore factor was good without being overbearing um this is one that you know if you're a, you know a, a hardcore horror fan you can still find enjoyment in this even though it seems like it's a little more catered to um a younger crowd like so you know uh, if you have like teenage children or if you're a teenager yourself and you know you have nightmares still after watching a scary movie this one ain't gonna hit you too hard but the uh, the creature design is solid it's original um and it has some some really some really creepy elements going on and there's also some really cool body horror like there's there's, there's one part that kind of hit heavy um 
like like the fly like when there's something going on with the body and um she's in the bathroom and i'll just i'll leave the rest up to the imagination but it reminded I, me of it. i've actually saw this a couple years ago uh-huh. um it's one of those things if i'm right in this film don't they mm-hmm. move, uh, move into the house then the no, family what move into the house and it's kind of like it's it's one of those like pocket towns yeah it's like a, your yeah. locals but then yeah. it's also like a vacation spot because they yeah. have like a marina yeah. there like so it's it's almost like the equivalent equivalent of like what you get out like the outer banks or like uh myrtle beach or something like that you know um but yeah so no the, the kid i guess i just remember something was, happened to the neighbor and then yeah, the that, thing that happened to the neighbor start happening in that house because somebody yeah. kind of notices something yes yeah I, so, so, yeah I, I i like this movie a lot and i mm-hmm. yeah it i forgot it was on netflix but i saw it this just, year, it, a couple years ago yeah i, I saw this I, a couple of years ago i remember seeing this a while back as well um but no it's it's relatively new to netflix because like i said i stumbled across it again because it was hitting that number five on the uh, on their top 10 list and okay. um yeah man but like just to your point man i thoroughly enjoyed it covers all of its bases um everything that you want in in a you know more subdued horror film um that i love it really revs up in the third phase comes full circle well man i was i was very pleased when when the credits started rolling i was like man yes that that was good that was that was good i i have nothing really negative to say about this film i was i was pleasantly surprised with how awesome it really turned out to be Damn, no, Brendan Fraser was supposed to be the bad guy in the Batgirl. What you got, Cornelius? Um, just the two other movies that we saw. Um, I can talk. I can open up about the Gray Man. Um, All right, let's go. The Gray Man. Um, pretty much stars. <laughs> <laughs> Love that opening, man. That was solid. <laughs> Yeah, I know. The Great Man stars uh, Chris Evans um, and Ryan Gosling. It's directed mm-hmm. by um, the, the Russo brothers that did a lot of um, good Marvel films like uh, Endgame, um, mm-hmm. Infinity, the Infinity War, and um, the last two Captain America films. Um, in this film... In this film, you have a CIA op- uh, skill operative that is released for jail. Um, a really, he's released for jail to take care of another operative. Um, Chris Evans pretty much plays a pure asshole in this film. Also, Anna Dia, uh, Armas and Billy Bob Thornton uh, star in this film. A lot of people have been crapping on this film, but for what it is, it's just a popcorn action movie. The two operatives are pretty much kind of competing with each other to get this. I mean, pretty much um, after each other about this. Um, I don't know. I, I forget what the MacGuffin was. It was like a, a foul or whatever. Thing, yeah. yeah. That's that's not the point. But um, what happens is Billy Bob Thornton and his adopted daughter were kidnapped. And it, it just goes from there. I, I I don't know. I, there's a lot of stuff happens in this, in this film. But I was go ahead. There, yeah, there really is. I mean, and you know, one thing that stood out to me was I mean the cast. Like you said, I mean, I'm a big fan of Billy Bob. Whether he's got a small role or, or you know the the lead, his presence is always felt. And what we got out of Gosling, like for some reason, like Gosling seems to excel in these kind of roles. Like we saw him do it in Drive. And we also saw him do it in what was that other one called? Like uh, Beyond the Beyond the Pines, Beyond the yeah. Tall Pines. Oh, uh, please you know, Beyond the Pines. There you go. Um, you know, he 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 really excels when it comes to you know this 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 style of film with this this high octane action energy and stuff. Um, so also, I really only like God forgives. He's good yeah. in that film. There you He's go. Yep. In yep. That film. Yes, he is. And um, you know, another thing that 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 stood out to me was um, I really really liked. The, the the action scenes like what we were getting from the you know the hand to hand combat or you know the gunplay there was a lot of explosions going on a lot of you know just just certifiable ass kicking and it had a dope car chase scene I mean 
the, the car chase scene in this film had everything. It had a bus, <laughs> had a train, had a lot of cars, things were blowing up. Everybody was moving at a very, very unsafe speed. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Um, you know, and um, and then the 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 friendship relationship situation between Gosling and uh Billy Bob Thornton's Billy Thornton, adopted yeah. daughter. Oh man, it was great. Like it was uh, I want to say she was uh the actress that played her was Julia Butters. Um she did great. She, she was very, very uh charismatic uh little uh little individual on screen but their relationship kind of hit the same way to me as like a uh, man on fire you know what i'm saying like whereas she knew you know she was protected as long as he was around but you know just kept kind of finding herself in situations that were out of her control hoping that he would show up you know what i mean and um that that part really uh or that whole dynamic really stood out to me um on this film and to your point corny uh Chris Evans, like I said, he was just a straight. Uh, he was very unlikable. Answer. It's reminded me of uh, Scott Pilgrim, or uh, or when he was in um, uh, even even his Johnny Blaze, when he was out. The and yeah. like uh, knives out, like like he, he's good at those that, that yeah. asshole man. It's yeah, fun, it's fun to hate it, him. Yes, and, and it, <laughs> he he made it very easy for us to root against him. Um, and it, yeah, I mean, like this one, like I said, it is it is just a high octane. Popcorn action flick, you, you know. Yeah, it's not requiring a lot of brain power. Uh, yeah, those those that are like bagging on it's like, what did you expect out of this? Like, what, some some elaborate plot. And the thing of it is, is even though it's not really breaking no new ground as far as you know this style of film, it still found a way to stay in its own lane and bring certain levels of originality in its own right. You know what I mean? It's not like you watch this and you're like, oh, this is a carbon copy of uh, Eagle Eye or, or, or some 007 film or this is a carbon copy of... You know, it, it's, it's its own film, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry, what did I say? Eagle Eye, Golden Eye. I'm sorry, I don't, yeah, I don't watch... No, Eagle, Eagle Eye was somewhere. an action film too. That, that was the oh, one well, with, uh, right. with Shia LaBeouf <laughs> and um, Michelle Morton, Morton That's um, right. That's yeah. right. Good. Yeah. See, were, even yeah, when I make mistakes, the, still the that was <laughs> yeah, there, there was a lot of cool stuff in here, man. Yeah. I, I did like Anna Diarmaz. She's dope, man. She's going, man, dude. She's the next, like, it, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I think what's going to happen, we're going to start seeing her get her own franchises or, or she's going to be that it action woman lately like, she, mm -hmm. she's got the range man I'm sure yeah. she's doing great like even in the role such knives out and, and you know then to come to this where she's shoot them up blah, like you know what I'm even recently yeah, the, the last um James Bond yeah that was what you yeah. could say yeah mm -hmm. and um, also this is a lot of good performances in here yeah. in general but man um Danish yeah yep in there Avic San he, he was great man mm -hmm. like it's got some really cool Alfred Woodard as, as the the boss, you know, yeah. over uh, Chris Evans, like that man, yeah, dude, it's, it was a good movie, man. It's solid. It's not. It's not nothing that's going to be winning the awards for original script or anything. No. But, but we just need to set up and let's just play with this action film, and it doesn't, man. Like like that that cargo plane scene. Oh, dude! Oh, man, come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I I, 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 I yeah. meant yes, dude. Yes, like, yes. I think I think the cargo plane scene is the new car chase. Like like Uncharted <laughs> just had a crazy one. You know, and now this film, like, <laughs> well, just just being up that high. I, and, 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 and I might have told you before, Corey, uh, my favorite one going back in the day was for Living Daylights. I know Carl mm -hmm. played, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I got to rewatch that. I, I just, all I remember was them riding down the snow in, on, on the cello. The cello I, yeah, the cello. Not much yeah. I but I do remember, was that the one where they made the, the, um, stuff the cello? <laughs> was that the one where he made the 18 wheeler do like a side? No, run? that's License to Kill. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm yeah, yeah. Why are we, why we talking about that. those two James Bond films? <laughs> um, um, Timothy Dalton might be one of my favorite James Bonds. He was a badass. He just got movies? two films. He only got hey, two he films. Got more, man. He should have yeah. a better run yeah. It ain't like he was busy, too busy. <laughs> right, right. He was a Bond, dude. I, and I like the films he was in, man. They, they, they just felt different, dude. They felt, they felt like they were trying to step into the more modern era, more so than kind of, than, kind than, of, than the other ones before that. I think before him was Roger Moore. Yeah. So I think he had a good interlude, man. They, kind of, they, 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 they kind of did him like they did Daniel Craig, kind of, kind of ground him without making him too, you know, mm -hmm. soft. Yeah. 
Yeah, but anyway, um, getting back to Gray Man, I really enjoyed this film. I kind of wish that I would have been able to see it on the big screen. I have a projector in my basement, but you know, sometimes it, I've pretty much want to. Sometimes I kind of wish I could go and see some of these Netflix films actually in a real theater. You know, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Some of them are quality. I mean, this yeah, one. You, yeah. I mean. This one, they they put the right amount of money into it. I mean, it, it it was not like it didn't just go straight to Netflix because, uh, you know, it was shortchanged in any way. It, it yeah, definitely yeah. hit hard in the in the theater. Yeah, you're right yeah. about that. This this is one like one of those like if I want to saw this back in the day, um, a trailer for this back in the day when I went and saw like two um, not Two Face Face Off or something that it, it would have been on. You know what I'm saying? What? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with it. Yeah. Like, like I said, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this uh, this film as well. Not too much negative going to come out of my mouth about it. So those that got bad things to say about it, it's like, man, it's just going to be one of those guys. There's always there's always one in the crowd, sometimes more. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's back on me. It is. Um, I guess we're going to do the note, right? That's the final one. Nope. Is nope. it or not? Nope. Nope. Y'all confusing me. I, I'm going to just act like it is. So, <laughs> this film is by the latest from Jordan Peele. Uh, we got... <laughs> nope. We got, uh, we got two siblings running a horse ranch in California, and they discover something wonderful and sinister in the skies above, while the owner of an adjacent theme park tries to profit from the mysterious otherworldly phenomenon. And this film stars Kiki Palmer, Daniel Kaluuya, Stephen Yuen, uh, Brandon Perea, uh, Barbie Ferreira, um, Michael Wincott, and I think there's at least one other mentionable. Donna Mills pops up. Uh, Keith David, David. Uh, for yeah. sure. And I think that's those are the mains, man. Did you mention you know, Steve you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got him. Okay. It's not a film with a lot of players going on. You know, it has people in it, but but mostly we're dealing with a few characters at a time, man. And um. I was thoroughly blown away with this man. Like, like it's hard to talk about it without giving a whole lot away. So I'm gonna just tell you things that I did like about it. And um, the main thing is that cast man, really strong performances across the board. Um, it's just a film that's a little bit understated too. In in, in a lot of ways, man, it's, it's more like um, a brooding. Not not a, it's not a noisy film. Like 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 you know some of the um, you know people could get used to it. So I think that could be part of some of the pushback I'm seeing with, with some of the commentary on it. And the thing is about this film, and, and it, it lets me know that you can't put Jordan Peele in a box, man. You don't, know, you don't know what he's going to do. He's going to give you a little indication, but it's still remixed and it still keeps you on your toes as a viewer. Like, like we definitely knew this thing was going to be involving aliens. He gave us that much, but to what aspect? What aspect of that? And and I think he does a good job of bringing us new ideas and and twisting on things that have already existed. And and it's just a really fun ride, man. You know what I'm saying? Overall, in general, man, I definitely enjoyed what he brought to the table with this. It, it is. It does feel, you know, a little long, but I've seen it three times so far, and every time that I've seen it, that watch time felt shorter and shorter because your understanding grows with each watch. You pick out new things that, that just yeah. add to the understanding of what the film is trying to bring to you, man. And, and it is more, to me, sci-fi thriller than, than than the horror of his previous films, you know, for sure. Yeah. And that's okay. And like you said, don't put that man in a box, because one thing that this film is, it's ultimately original. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why this film is a standout to me. Um, like you, you know, you can't play spoilers, so we got to walk on eggshells, tiptoe around, uh, and I don't want to take all of the all of the 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 good the good vibes. Like I still leave some cookies in the jar. So two things that stood out to me personally: um, love the, the 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 creature design, or you know what we would consider the creature design. Um, I thought that was a very very original approach. Um, when it comes to that, you have to watch the film to then know what I'm talking about. And I love the sub story. We have we have a main story that's going on, but there is a sub story that was just so entertaining to me. And this, I mean, it was captivating. Like when when I was watching parts of this sub story, I mean, it was jaw dropping for me. And I mean, that could have been a movie in itself. Uh, so I, I, outside of the great cast, the great acting, um, very original uh, main story. That sub story is hitting like a Tyson haymaker, man. I'm telling you. I 
want to just add on to what you all said and the whole thing about putting Jordan in a box. I'm just glad that he isn't the next yeah. M. Night Shyamalan. I'm just mm-hmm. glad to where he, all his films have been completely different type of suspense mm-hmm. type films. Yeah. And, I, and, and I've been really enjoying it. He doesn't have a formula on how he's telling the story. He's not telling the story the same way. You know, mm-hmm. like this one had a little bit more humor. Gimmick, you know, yeah, this doesn't have that gimmick. Yeah, he has humor, but this one was overall the most humorous. Overall, this might be the funnest of all of his films. You know, the whole thing. Uh, man, the, the discourse out there is mixed, but honestly, this might be my favorite film that he's done, film. dude. Like, like I, I, it's, it's like I said, man, I think if folks, you know, who might have been lukewarm on it when they first watch it, and if they go back and watch it again, I think it's one of those ones that's going to reward repeated viewings, and it's just going to feel stronger and stronger. It, it's not, it, it, and, and and I think it's a little different than the other ones because I feel like moment to moment in those other films there was a lot of noise going on. This film yeah. has quiet moments yeah. where you're just sitting there and you're just like the sound mix on this is really great, man. I yeah. definitely like, and you're just really just watching what's going on, you know, and instead of getting constant barrage of dialogue and commentary. I also think those that were were getting, you know, discouraged or have negative things to say is because they walked in with a certain expectation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, Which that's, you that's will it. fail yourself because <laughs> I remember distinctly when Us first came out, there were a lot of people like, oh, well, this one's not Get Out. I mean, it, because you have a certain expectation. You don't He's know not what telling the same story over and over. No, He's and, not telling the same story over and over. And I mean, and he has a very unique approach in how he delivers his material. And you know what I'm saying? That this follows that same that same concept. And I'm sure the next film will be the same. Like, like you said, he spoon feeds us just enough to pull us in, to let us know, hey man, we got something hot coming in. Outside of that, leave the expectations in your car on your walk into the theater. You got to go in yeah, there. Yeah, free your mind and then your ass will follow. There you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah, but oh, like like I was saying, overall, I enjoyed this film. It's a lot of neat characters in and, 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 and a lot of nice humor. In, 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 in perfect spots, um, bunch of suspense. Mm-hmm. I really, overall, um, I didn't know what I was expecting when I was going to the theater. I just sat down, waited my popcorn to get delivered to me, and wanted to sit back and just enjoy this film, and I did. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Stand out his character is um, Kiki, Palm- Kiki Palmer, because other than... Um, um, a killer and a bee. I don't remember her being in too many other films, and it was it was nice seeing her in this. And dude, not for nothing, Kalua kills it. Yeah, like his his demeanor, He's always good. his his mannerisms, his demeanor on film. Like he he brought something to the table. He showed me something that I haven't seen from him in other films. Like. Just um, the way that he was able to just really be subdued, um, and, and it, it just it was it was just a completely different element. Um, it just shows this testament to his versatility as an actor. And another thing that I really liked about this film is the story building, like from where it starts to where it stops. I mean, it is like a, a just a constant like ride up this hill of awesome and i just i thought it was just so cool the way it all played out you know what i'm saying it's very um very pleasing to 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 see the progression in the film as we reach the climactic point which is also very uh unique and original and entertaining yeah um kiki palmer though she definitely has like a child actor um history a killer in the b is definitely her most known thing but She's in my dear's family reunion, the long shots of uh what else? I don't remember the long shots. That's where she's played the, the football player. Yeah, um, yeah, with uh Ice, Ice Cube, Cube. Yeah. yeah. Uh film called okay. The Cleaner, uh Ice Age, she did a voice in there, Joyful Noise. Um, she was in a film Animal, um, also um Imperial Dreams. Oh, I forgot about that. With, uh, oh, with yeah, yeah, I seen that. That's yeah. a that's a rough little watch, man. Uh, she came back again for Ice Age the Collision Course. Uh 
film called Pimp. Oh, that was her, bro. I didn't even watch that. Now I'm going to watch it. Dang. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Dang. She was also in Hustle. Yeah. Um, she just did Alice, which I got to finish. I bought that on Voodoo, but I ain't watching it yet. <laughs> it's it's on sale. Um, also, she did the voice of Izzy Hawthorne and Lightyear, nice. which was um, Lightyear. Okay. Uh, okay. Best voice. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, she, she's been there, you know, behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, it, I, overall, man, it's, it's a great film, man. It, it has a lot of like the closest thing that it can remind me of right now that I can think of off him is maybe Close Encounters of the Third Kind with a twist. Like, and that's the thing, it's like a lot of these ideas he's bringing to the film, they aren't necessarily new, but they're remixed enough that he, and he's putting his own point of view on him where it just it's like whoa like like especially the stuff that he's doing with steven nguyen's characters yes. back story and a lot of people were dismissive of that like it doesn't really have much you could have left that out i'm like no that's no it's, it's a point it's a point to that story it's a point to that that's story. the yeah. story i'm talking about bro yeah. that shit was so entertaining it's point to the what? story man so so, so it, it's it's, 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 this isn't a film for uh, the casual filmmaker, man. Like a film viewer, I think. I think if you're one that challenges yourself, you're going to appreciate Peel challenging himself and trying to bring us something different, you know. And, and, and yes. I think that's dope, man. I want every one of his films to be different. That's that's what I want from this guy now going forward. And that's what I come. That's the only thing that I'm going to expect. Yes. That his films are all going to be different. <laughs> and you know what? They're going to be original. It's not going to be a remake or some regurgitated, recycled oversaturated idea that's already been done four times before mm -hmm. I, high five to peel just for being original because that's something that severely lacks in modern filmmaking so that alone it yeah. deserves an award yeah, definitely man definitely a great film man um anything else you guys want to mention before we get out of here no i'm kind of hungry Okay. I'm hungry too. I, I didn't want to mention you. that. What do you think? They're all related. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. I will mention some film related. Like, like Tyree said in the past two years, we hungry. I will mention some film related. This weekend is going to be ridiculous for film fans. Like, especially oh, yeah. like, like, we're, we're, I mean, there's at least five that I put up, but I think there's about 12 films that are coming out between theaters and streaming services. Um, and uh, pay-per-view, rental, whatever, um, this weekend on August 5th, including the Rise of the Ninja Turtles movie on uh, Netflix. You've also got Prey, the fifth Predator film. You've also got um, uh, Carter, uh, Carter, which looks amazing on Netflix. Um, you know, that's from the same director of The Villainous. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also got uh, Bodies, 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 which looks like a fun um, comedy. That's a lot of bodies. And it, what was uh, what's the film? Bullet, uh, Bullet Train? Bullet Train, yeah. I'm going to go to the theater for that. That's tomorrow. Woo, let me get my ticket now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and, I'm off tomorrow. And like you said, there's still a few other ones that are still under the radar. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot. I think I That's think all the fifth is a un, like a, is a unmarked or un, uncharted holiday or something because this one they, they was they was ready. <laughs> one of the, one one of the series too that I'm one of my favorite comic book series is called um, The Sandman um, mm -hmm. by Neil Gaiman. Um, he's the he um, was the writer of um, Coraline and um, Stardust and American the series American Gods. He he also wrote that book, but. Mm -hmm. um, the Sandman um, is actually going to be on Netflix, and that's what I'm going to be binge, watch, binge watching ten episodes of this um, August the fifth. Mm, yeah, I, 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 I don't, like y'all said, what what's going on with August the fifth? What's what's this like? Watching all that shit, everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching it all. I'm all of it. Yeah, watch what? a movie. Watch a couple Sandmans. Go to see another movie. Couple more Sandmans. It's, a, it's, it's yeah. also a Kevin Bacon film called They. Uh, them, they, no, it's called it's called yeah. they slash them. Yeah, yeah, was, they slash them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a yeah, slasher film. But, I, yeah, that that also comes yeah. out on August too. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, uh, I'm gonna watch that one, but due to the subject matter, I kind of want to see how they, uh, what approach they take before I decide if I'm gonna talk about it or not because it could be overly yeah. sensitive, yeah, I'm, I'm insensitive. Wondering, I'm kind of wondering how that community is gonna react to it yeah. because depending on how they do this thing. You know, I don't know. You know, this could go either way. Dude. But I did put the trailer up on the, the the trailer feed, so those that are interested, check it out. 
Um, and then you'll see exactly what we're tiptoeing about. But yes, I, I you know, it's, it's I definitely want to see how the, yeah. the approach they take first. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but but yeah, I'm I'm hyped for this weekend, man. I'm be in TV mode. I'm at the fucking exercise. I'm gonna do push ups between between um, movies and shit. I don't know, man. Okay, because we're just gonna be sitting on the couch. Yeah, right? man. I'm, I'm just, man. I'm being in the house like I got a fucking ankle thing on. You want to rest? Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, but yeah, that's it, folks, man. We're going to catch y'all next time. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be back for more from the Canopy Film Show. My name is Monk. You can catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. And follow us at FTC Net um, on Instagram. This is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me on Instagram at Bobby Blockbuster 118. I'm Kinez Bros. You can find me on Facebook, Kinez Bros. On Instagram, Kinez Bros. On Twitter at Kinez nineteen seventy six, and I watch videos on TikTok. Um, and my my, my um, name there is um, Kinez nineteen seventy six. Always makes me laugh when you say that. All right, folks, man, we out of here. To the sound of Bobby laughing. <laughs>